spring has sprung, which means the trash cans on any Manhattan block, uh, they'll be filled up with garbage umbrellas torn asunder by the winds of New Jersey. What the world needs is an umbrella built by a mechanical engineer that doesn't cost a trunk a pound sterling. David Kahn is a force behind Davik Umbrellas. Full disclosure, I am a convert. I actually paid hard money for the one Olivia is using right now, this Gorgiosity orange one here. We're honored to have you here. Why are you the only umbrellas that are indestructible? If I buy one in London and pay more money than God for it, it lasts a month or two. And the garbage ones are garbage. What are you doing differently <laughs> so that I actually own the thing for a year. Well, it, you know, there's 200 parts to make a single umbrella. 200 and pieces. It's a very, very unforgiving device. So if any single part of it fails, like even a single rivet, the whole thing doesn't work. So it's really, really challenging. It's costly to, uh, to incorporate uh, all the quality control systems in place to maintain, you know, high quality product. But, uh, you know, most of the other manufacturers out there for years have been producing disposable goods. How do you respond to the disposable world? The guys in the street corner, $5, $10, whatever it is, how do you, within a business plan, respond to all the lesser products? Well, there's a place for that, you know, but uh, we chose to do a different route. Um, I just think there's a, a large group of people that uh, want to buy high quality goods. Uh, we, we believe it's better to buy one high quality product that'll last for many years yeah. than an endless stream of replacement. And they're almost like accessible, Olivia. I mean, but these fabrics, Olivia, they're... they don't say Olivia Stearns, do they? Well, because they're not hot pink or? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I mean, well, you... perhaps I'm not your customer. Who's your customer? We, we do have a fuchsia, a fuchsia pink. Good. You know, it's on our traveler line. I'm getting smaller. interested. But, uh, you know, uh, umbrellas are unisex. And, uh, <laughs> True. Are you selling more of the $49 disposable ones or the $350? The most popular model that we have is a $99 uh, solo. Break out this one right now. This goes in my man bag, right? Yeah, this is a fabulous umbrella. It, uh, you put it's it right in front of the TV screen. Come on, David, put it up above you so, right. so we can see your The thing that's unusual about this is this rib. Every umbrella has one uh, flaw, you know, one weakness. And for, for a three-fold frame, which is what this is, this is the rib that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that causes inversion. But you can see that our, our umbrellas are composed of different materials, fiberglass, yeah. Aircraft grade aluminum, and uh, it just is very, very resilient. Aircraft grade aluminum. Um, the producers are telling me that there's some new smart technology for umbrellas. Absolutely, What's yeah. What's up with that? Uh, well, you know, uh, losing your umbrellas is one of the most uh, bothersome oh. things with uh, when you have a nice umbrella. So we set out from day one to try to solve that problem. Umbrella GPS. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we we, tr we thought about GPS. GPS is pretty um, is expensive to incorporate. It also consumes a lot of power. Okay. But recently, we uh, we discovered something called proximity awareness. Yeah. And it utilizes this. This is a small beacon chip. It emits a signal. Sure. A it's on signal. Bluetooth. That's exactly Bluetooth yeah. low energy, so it consumes okay. extremely low power, and uh, it connects to an app yeah. on your iPhone. What do you so, do? So about if Tom it? leaves the monkey bar without the umbrella because it stopped raining. His phone's going to vibrate. I got a chance exactly. to find it. Your, what your about, phone will alert What do you do at home when you've got eight umbrellas in the thing at home and all of a sudden there's zero because it rained and the children and all their friends take them? I mean, do you have well, a children monitor or, you know, some, some help there? Where are these made? Uh, well, it, it depends. So we, we, we design and manufacture I mean, and engineer, engineer them in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but they're manufactured in either China or Europe, depending on the model. When you were Tufts, that particular model is When you were amazing. Tufts in mechanical engineering, did you know, like, was this like a yeah. dash of light your sophomore year? And it you actually, said, you know, umbrellas? It, it actually was. You know, it started years and years ago when I was in, uh, studying engineering. Um, you know, I just, it's always been an interesting thing for me to work on. It was it, a project at that time. Is this called? Dave, I, I, I like the one that uh, Tom was holding. Looks nice and sturdy. How much? That, does that version cost? This one, this this particular one <laughs> retails for three hundred fifty dollars. Ah, no wonder. The okay. wood is imported from Italy. It's hand uh, hand assembled in uh, in, in uh, oh, England. Is this a uh, cultural thing? Do Italians spend more money on umbrellas than the Europeans Chinese? do? Yeah, yeah they do. But in the U.S., you right. know, until you know very recently. Yeah. Uh, it's been, uh, I'd like to point out that we have about 21 years of bad luck here after this segment. We do. 